Did you know that prompt injection can lead to a full account takeover? Let's explore this with DeepSeek AI, which is a kind of big player in the AI market. They released a new model about two weeks ago that has reasoning capabilities. And that's sort of the first time I really started using that chatbot. And it got a lot of press around that because it's competing with the top tier models from OpenAI, like the OpenAI's O1 model. And the way I start usually when I look at an application, I actually try to see if the app can hack itself. And here's an example of how I do that. I just ask it to print text from the cross-site scripting cheat sheet, which is a web vulnerability. And you can see here, it actually found a cross-site scripting vulnerability. What does that mean? So first of all, right, what we see here is now we have apps that can hack themselves, right? And what we actually see here is the cross-site scripting pop-up. If you're not familiar with cross-site scripting, I recommend watch, that you watch this video. I'm going to put a link down in the description as well. I have a video about web application security fundamentals that explains it really well and in detail. But at a high level, it basically allows an account takeover or it allows an adversary to run JavaScript code in the application so the, the adversary can do everything the user can basically to, do. And as a first step, I tried to figure out exactly what the condition was for the cross-site scripting. And here you can see it was an iframe. So if the attacker injects an iframe, then deepseek.com, they can run code on deepseek.com. And you can see here it pops up uh, the text hacked. The big question, however, was, right, is there actually an attack avenue? Like, you know, can an attacker get their own data easily into the system? with the goal being uh, a full account takeover. So the way I explored this was, you know, is there a prompt injection angle? Is there somewhere a place where the user might process untrusted data that is coming potentially from an untrusted source? And on the bottom here in the chat box, you can actually see, right? You can upload documents and images. So what if you analyze a PDF document or you analyze an image from an untrusted source. So that could trigger this vulnerability. And in order to actually perform an account takeover, we need to find the user session token, or it's usually a cookie, or in the case of DeepSeek, it was actually a bearer token stored in local storage. You can see here, I used uh, developer tools in the browser, and then I, I kind of looked through the various cookies and local storage. And then I tested which of the tokens is needed to actually authenticate me to the system. And after about 10 minutes or so of research, I knew it is that user token. The only thing that is needed was that user token. Good. So then I tested this payload, which is basically doing the iframe injection, the cross-site scripting, but then actually accessing local storage with the get item uh, to retrieve the token. And you can see here, this actually sometimes failed because the model would refuse to render the iframe. Uh, but there's easy bypasses for things like this, right? You just base64 encoded. That also would bypass actually uh, web application security firewalls. So that's kind of the payload I had. And then I put that in and you can see uh, the chatbot actually rendered the iframe and the application itself is vulnerable to cross-site scripting. So we got uh, the pop-up that shows that cookie, uh, that uh, user token value that came from local storage. Good. So now what we need is basically put that into a file and send somebody that file and they summarize it or interact with the file. And now you actually can see the exploit being triggered with prompt injection. And we have access to uh, the user token. And in this case, I actually also dumped all the cookie values. And I want to show you how an account takeover would happen, right? So an attacker would send this token to their own server, and then they get that token. And so the way just to show that this is actually leading to an account takeover is we go in an in in a incognito window, we open DeepSeek, and in order to use that token, I again use the developer tools. Uh, very basic how I'm, I'm demonstrating this here, but uh, it's kind of useful to understand the, the core fundamentals behind such exploits, right? And so now I can interact with the DOM of this chat.deepseek.com uh, domain, and I'm going to clear the local storage, and I'm going to set 
the item, which is exactly that user token, token and I paste that in here, I run that. And now if I just refresh the page, you can see it loaded the chat history and I'm basically logged in as this other user. This is kind of how prompt injection is actually capable of triggering cross-site scripting in addition to then exfiltrating tokens and accessing tokens. And here, if you're curious, this is the actual prompt injection uh, that is in the file. It's again, the base64 encoded string. And in this case, the only difference to the scenario I showed earlier is that we also access the, all the cookies and append it to the output. Great. So uh, here again, this is the file. And you know, uploading that file is the prompt injection attack avenue. Good. Uh, one thing I want to do, just leave you with, uh, because I did not show it in this video, is you know, brainstorm about ideas on how the user token could actually be sent to a third-party server. So in this case, we actually didn't show, in this demo video, I didn't show you how the attacker would send that cookie to a third-party server. But think about ideas, and I wonder how many ideas you could come up with. You could also put it, like, discuss it down in the chat, but um, just curious. It's a little bit of a food for thought. Good. Uh, with that, I want to thank you for watching, and I hope this was interesting, and have a great day. Bye-bye.